I'd like to take the time to thank Pilotitis and Stark and Watson for having us come all the way down from New York to Greece to help teach this course. Now I'd like to take the time to introduce Dr. Emil Uperdorn and Dr. Robert Schreier. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourselves? So I'm a physical therapist. Uh, I specialize in neurological rehabilitation. Uh, I've been practicing for about 11 or 12 years now. And when I started my career, I started in rehab centers working in inpatient. I worked at Mount Sinai, which is an inpatient center in New York City, as well as Kessler, which is an inpatient center outside of New York City, both of which specialize in traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, stroke, or CVA, uh, as well as various other neurological dysfunctions. Uh, from there, I also went into private practice as well as into teaching, and I'm now a full-time faculty member at a college in New York City. And in addition to that, I own a private practice along with uh, another physical therapist and a speech-language pathologist. We specialize in neurological conditions and most, mostly multiple sclerosis as well as Parkinson's disease. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a board-certified neurological specialist and uh, a multiple sclerosis specialist as well. And the center as a whole is a, uh, special, has a specialty in multiple sclerosis. So really our emphasis is on neurological care. Uh, but while I say I'm a neurological therapist, I also utilize a lot of the orthopedic principles and uh, also treat individuals with orthopedic dysfunction. And probably one of the most important things I, I'd, I'd like to think is that I integrate orthopedics inside the neurological conditions as well? Well, I've been a physical therapist for about 14 years or so. I practice in New York City. I started my career out of Mount Sinai Hospital and had a great opportunity to rotate through the various parts of the hospitals and made me really see the different types of therapies that can be done for an individual. So my specialty is in orthopedics and neurological rehabilitation, essentially trying to find what are the barriers and getting us to move. Bottom line, I want people to move. When we move, we feel great. When we don't, a lot of things happen. It's interesting how, whether it's an orthopedic issue or a neurological issue, when we lose the ability to move, we lose the ability to essentially live life. We don't want to do certain things because it becomes too difficult, whether we have a neurological deficit or we have pain. And once we have that barrier, it leads to a sequel of events where we don't want to leave the house and then we don't want to participate and hang out with our friends or our loved ones. Then all of a sudden, you start getting cardiovascular problems because now you have a sedentary lifestyle and you start gaining weight or getting hypertension. So it's interesting how you have an orthopedic issue or a neuro issue that causes you to be sedentary and all of a sudden that escalates the cardiovascular onset of disease. So my goal is to get people to move, right, and to want to move because essentially it allows them to live life. Tell us more about your rehabilitation center in New York. Yeah, so we're a multidisciplinary center in Midtown Manhattan uh, where we see predominantly individuals with neurological conditions, again, uh, with multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, uh, and post-stroke or CVA. And we, we're a center that, we're a standalone center. We're privately owned and we're one of the few privately owned centers uh, that focus in neurological care. Uh, and we really emphasize education uh, amongst our therapists and our staff, as well as uh, understanding, truly understanding what is affecting the patient, the individual patient, so that each therapist can treat that individual to fill their fullest. Um, so, our treatment principles predominantly include looking at a patient not only as a diagnosis or not even only as their symptom or their dysfunction, but looking at the entire patient, taking into account all of their physical disabilities as well as outside factors that are affecting those uh, issues, and utilizing uh, a scale or a classification system that uh, confirms the individual's diagnosis as well as how what we perform with them is going to fit into their lives and improve their participation in their lives. Um, all the therapists that work uh, with us at Aspire, we all meet once a week and we review patients and our primary focus is, is patient care 
uh, from a very high-end neurological level. As opposed to treating symptoms, we look deeper to see where the symptoms are caused and even the cause of that cause. And we look into the brain, the spinal cord, the neurological system, and try to address those symptoms from the origin as opposed to just at the end. The name of the center is called Aspire Center for, for Rehab. It's located in Midtown Manhattan. And essentially, it's a very, very special place because it's very unique because um, along myself and my two business partners, you know, it's therapist owned and run. And we have a basic philosophy of patient care, patient care, patient care. And for that reason, everything we do from the way we train the staff to the way we interact with the patients is all about setting up an environment of high energy. You come to Aspire, it's, you feel the energy once you, you walk in. This energy of people, everybody wants you to get better because quite frankly, everybody understands what it's all about. We put all our personal problems outside the door. You come in, it's all about the patient. Um, I understand that insurance is, is making it difficult for, for companies to survive and certain companies have to do certain things which we essentially don't want to go. We pride ourselves in seeing patients for extended period of time. So we don't double book patients, all for the, the main goal, getting the patient better. So in order to do that, we have physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. And we treat the whole body. We essentially are always looking for the cause of the cause of the cause of why a person has a dysfunction versus just treating the, the symptom and looking at the long-term management and for future success. Can you tell us how you integrate orthopedics with your neurological patients? So in a majority of individuals with neurological conditions, they will over time present with symptoms that are secondary to their neurological condition. And you know, in many cases where somebody has a weakness or a lack of strength in a muscle or a, a lack of ability to contract a muscle, they develop other orthopedic related issues related to the joint itself uh, or directly related to the muscle. And oftentimes that orthopedic issue is the primary factor that's limiting their function. Uh, and once we're able to address that and clear that out adequately, we can then help them restore their neurological system as well. <clears throat> One of the key elements there is not only treating orthopedic conditions that are caused by the neurological dysfunction, but also ensuring that our neurological interventions don't cause other orthopedic dysfunctions. And one of the main areas where you see this is people are often prescribed braces by physical therapists or doctors. Uh, and when somebody's prescribed a brace for one joint, we have to take into account how that's gonna impact the other joints surrounding it. And uh, in many cases, whether it's a brace or the, the orthopedic issue related to neurological dysfunction, you have a negative effect on neighboring joints. And just by focusing on that joint from an orthopedic level, we're able to unlock uh, endless potential in the rest of the joints and the rest of the muscle. It's interesting. When you look at the, the literature on orthopedics, it's going more and more towards neurological training. Um, if somebody has lower back pain, it's because they move incorrectly. So they're looking at what they're doing in the neural world to address that. And in the neural world, they're realizing, well, if I, if I need to get a certain motion, I need to orthopedically have some type of manual therapy skills to free up the joint before I could train the joint. So it's interesting, both worlds are kind of merging together and I love seeing it because it's no longer, I'm an orthotherapist, I'm a neurotherapist. No, I'm a therapist. My main goal is to get the person to move, right? Remove the barrier orthopedically and then retrain it in the brain. What is the main purpose of your trip to Greece? The, the purpose of the trip here to Greece is actually to participate in opportunity to educate individuals uh, really outside of the scope of where we are currently able to within the United States and start to bring our theories and our thoughts abroad. And really the goal here is uh, on a much bigger level uh, than just focusing on treating individuals. Rather, it's, it's to focus on utilizing the World Health Organization's uh, ICF, which is the International Classification of Function, and utilize that to really identify what dysfunctions are impacting a patient. Uh, and from there, we can then go much, much deeper than conventional physical therapy has before, and we can evaluate how these symptoms are presenting based on the neurological system. And from there, we can utilize some of our standard treatment approaches, but also some newer approaches to identify ways to treat the actual nervous system and actually change deficits at the root of the neurological system, as opposed to just treating a symptom. 
and uh, really, you know, we've we've worked very hard on establishing this in New York City, where we practice, and we've seen great success, and we've seen patients improve where we never thought they could before. And it's something that we really feel that we, we need to share with Greece, the United States, the world, and we really need to take physical therapy to the next level. The, the purpose of this trip is pretty much the same purpose I just have in life, and that is to spread good therapy. Uh, a ther good therapy is, is essentially the missing piece in this medical model, right? We have these fancy machinery that could detect almost anything nowadays, but when you treat it, th you need good old-fashioned therapy in order to facilitate the healing process, whether it's orthopedically or neurologically. So the goal is always to share the world of what is being done. I'm in a unique um, type of case where I, I'm a faculty member, I, I do research, I own a practice, so I feel like I could translate to people what's going on in different angles. Like in the school settings, I understand what it is to own a business. I understand that you don't have 100 visits, you can't spend five hours with the patients. Conversely, you know, since I'm in, in the school setting, I could teach people what's going on in, in the research. So I feel like I have a unique outlook on how to deal with patients and essentially trying to figure out what are the true barriers in treating, treating a patient, because it's more than just the skills, right? It's really looking at the logistics of dealing with time management and all these different other type of factors. So I'm here trying to help promote, the end goal is to promote great therapy throughout the world. Can you tell us what is ICF and how you utilize it? So ICF, uh, it's, it's called the International Classification of Function, uh, and it was a classification system put together by the World Health Organization. And it's now being broadly used to, uh, to start to define individuals by not just their neurological diagnosis, uh, and also not by their disability, um, as previous classification systems did, rather to define them by their ability to function and their ability to perform within their daily routine and their daily life. Uh, now the classification system itself is profoundly used to classify individuals and I think that's gonna aid us significantly in the world of research where we can start comparing people specifically uh, related to their, not only their diagnosis, but the dysfunction or uh, ailments that they might have so that we can start to really see what, I what instruments that we have that are available to treat individuals specifically as opposed to just treating broad groups of individuals. And I think doing that will help us have better outcomes overall with the research studies. But what we're really working on now is utilizing this classification system as a truly clinically relevant tool. And uh, what we've been working on is developing that down to once we define the classification that that individual falls in, and which is entitled the body structure, um, which would be the neurological system or musculoskeletal system, we're looking to go deeper and uh, define specifically what joint, what muscle, what tendon, what nerve, what region of the brain or spinal cord it is that is causing the patient's ind individualized problem. And in doing that, now we're using a classification system, but making it clinically relevant. And that way we can ensure that the treatments that we're selecting and the interventions are appropriate for that individual, uh, because oftentimes in neurological uh, uh, patients, oftentimes in neurological situations, it takes six to even eight weeks to see significant changes. So where previously we, the, the world of rehab medicine wouldn't be 100% confident uh, that the intervention was gonna work and they'd have to stay the course, uh, now we feel like using this classification system and delving deeper we can identify what we should be doing and be confident so we can move forward and truly achieve neuroplasticity and plastic changes within the brain or neurological system. Why is it important to integrate ICF into your treatments? Well, the ICF model allows us to systematically figure out what is the barrier for the person to perform an activity. The, one of the biggest frustrations I always have with teaching is that at the end of the lecture, I'll ask the class, how would you treat so-and-so? And every single student would have said something totally different. And then I realized with time, as they get more experience, that things do things totally different as well. And when you look at other healthcare fields, you know, they're more systematic in, in their approaches. If you were to go into the emergency room with, with chest pain, quite frankly, they'll do the things exactly the same. They're, they won't be like, oh, you have chest pain, maybe it's your you know, 
your pec strain. No, they're going to rule out the heart first. And however, unfortunately, in, in our field, people are kind of all over the place because, quite frankly, there's a lot of good information out there. But how do we kind of put it together in a framework that kind of help a clinician decide which one to do versus the flavor of the month? versus, oh, I just took a course this weekend, I'm going to do that. Or my favorite is saying, um, good things good, I mean, new things good, bad things old. So what the ICF does is really figure out why the person has a problem and then look at all the different tools I've learned in the past in order to treat it versus always constantly being all over the place. So long story short, it is systematic approach to guaranteed that good therapy is being done every single time. Do you have any words of advice for aspiring physical therapists? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, always remember why you want to be in this field, why you want to be in the field of rehabilitation. And uh, as you kind of work through, maybe it's prerequisites to get into school to become a rehab specialist or physical therapist, um, or you're already in school and you're, you're graduating, uh, remember what the focus is because it can often be very stressful and once you're out in the clinic and you're treating individuals with various dysfunctions there's a lot of other factors that come into play whether it be time or ability or resources uh, ability to provide patient care in adequate amount of time uh, all those factors might feel like they could stack up against you but if you keep focused on why you want to do this then the reality is you want to actually truly help people um, and you want to truly help them from a, from a high level, you know. Uh, so if you keep that in mind, then you can tr truly focus on the individual patients and try to take the field to the level where it should be, which is at a very high level of research, uh, very high level of care, and ensuring that you're using consistent outcomes to uh, ensure high quality patient care. The biggest thing is that I started my career in neuro. I, I have a huge love passion for ortho as well. When I finally had the opportunity to start practicing ortho, uh, I was immensely disappointed in the, what was out there. And I actually wanted to stop treating as an orthopedic therapist because there was like no science, there wasn't much of system to it, it was very, you know, all over the place. So then, fortunately, I, w I had to take, start taking other courses for my, my doctorate, and it opened up a whole new world. What's out there, of true therapy, there's you no know, science and theoretical approach behind it. And it made me realize like, wow, if I didn't had this um, opportunity, I would have kind of totally went the wrong direction. I would have thought orthopedics, oh, that's boring, that's simple, there's nothing there. So my, my point is, is that a lot of times when we become disenchanted is because we don't know what our options are. There are people out there doing amazing things, you know. Uh, whenever I go to the National Convention for, for Physical Therapists, you hear amazing therapists doing amazing things that I would never think about doing. So whenever you feel like, you know, this feels not for me or there's more to it, you know, there are people out there doing great things, you know. We always welcome people to come and watch what we do. And you, you'll see, you know, what is all about. What is the potential, the potential of really understanding what you're doing with the patient and making meaningful changes versus treating the symptoms, putting a Band-Aid on it, but really making meaningful change. So long story short, there is a way, right, if you just look.